Hi guys and welcome or welcome back to this channel. In this video I'm gonna show you how to set up and overclock this gaming rig. Before start tweaking the system I just wanna tell you why I chose this specific part. The NZXT S340 is a compact ATX mid-tower case. All steel chassis with a minimalist style available in 5 color. It came with two fans, one in the back and one in the top panel. With a nearly perfect cable management system I found very easy to install all the components of this build. It took me only like 10 to 15 minutes. Most of the screw are toolless. You can change the CPU or adding a discrete GPU in less than 5 minutes and without a screwdriver. This build is based on the Ryzen 3 2200G, a quad-core processor with an integrated Vega 8 GPU. It's the best priced performance APU in the market. You'll see the numbers in a minute. It's simply impressive. Seasonic is one of the best, if not the best, PSU brand. The S12 2 bronze 430 watts is reliable, stable and with enough power even for a discrete high-end GPU card. The system averages only 100 watts under load and 130 watts overclocked. You have like another 300 watts for expansion and the fan is really quiet. At this price is a no-brainer. AB350 Gaming Free, another good motherboard from Gigabyte. Stable, rich of features, easy but complete BIOS. 4 DDR4 DIMMs and that red LED strip seems tailored for the S340 chassis. SanDisk Ultra 2, 480 GB. Good price, capacity, performance and the color are just perfect for this build. Last but not least, if the 2200G is the king of this build, the memory kit is the queen. If you really want this APU to shine with this kit, you have 300 MHz out of the box and 3200 MHz C14 overclocked. It performs like the Flare X but half of the price. Even if nowadays the trend is to have 16GB, in gaming you rarely need more than 5. And with this motherboard you can add another kit in the future if you need it. Speaking about memory, here you can see the impact if you buy the wrong kit. With this HyperX Predator, just by loading the XMP profile, the gain is 18% in World of Warcraft and 27% in Counter-Strike. Plus, if you follow my guide, you can obtain up to 35% increase in World of Warcraft and an amazing 50% in Counter-Strike. In the next week, I'm going to test other games, with real-world gameplay video with this system, so you can see how it will run with your favorite game. Check my playlist or subscribe to see the new uploads. I had many of you asking if this configuration can stream, so I benchmarked World of Warcraft and Counter-Strike Global Offensive with Twitch and OBS in 720p 60fps, which is the most used format. Even in stream mode, the game runs very well, with less fps but without any frame rate drop or any issue. I will make a deep review of World of Warcraft later on, I didn't have the time to test the performance in a ride while streaming. But don't worry, I will do a detailed review very soon when I finish to gear up to tank in Andorus. An interesting thing is that the 2200G can have the same performance of his bigger brother, tested with the Flare X, which combined is around $200 more. Even with AAA games, we have an interesting gain in performance, and with some titles, it allows us to play at medium setting around 30 FPS. Keep in mind that with this board it's highly possible that you must update the BIOS with an older CPU. Check below in the description the link to the workaround. To set the memory with their XMP profile is very easy. Just go under Extreme Memory Profile and enable the Profile 1. Finally, the best part of the video, Overclocking Guide. I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to unleash all the power of your Ryzen system in three steps. I'm not gonna do a fine tuning in this video, I'll do another one with extreme sub-zero cooling in the next few weeks, if you want to see a full and detailed overclocking guide. Overclocking may damage your system with the wrong voltages, if you have any doubt or question feel free to drop me a comment below, but don't risk if you're not sure how to do it. When I overclock a gaming system I have two goals. First, to reach the best performance possible and second, you have to be super stable. Just imagine, you're playing World of Warcraft with your bad overclocked PC, last boss of the ride, 5% left and you're the main tank. The off tank is dead of course, but everybody is cheering you for your amazing performance and boom, 
your PC drops dead. Well, it happens to me once, I still feel bad about it. Ok, step 1. Go into the BIOS and under the memory option raise the multiplier to 32. Timings on manual. Save and exit. Now it's super simple. Open main test 64 and click begin test. Let it run overnight. If the test is still running without errors, move to step 2. Otherwise, you can raise the cast latency from 14 to 15 or higher. Or, as last resort, go back to the XMP profile. To overclock the CPU, this is what we are going to do. Take this slide as reference and watch my screen. In Ryzen Master, click the Game Mode Profile and make sure it's selected only the GPU voltage and the frequency. Set 3.8 and click Apply. Run OCCT and leave it for 5 minutes to check if everything runs correctly and the CPU doesn't overheat. In CPU Z you can check in real time the voltage. We have 1.38, which is fine, it's normal to have some drop. Now you can start to raise the clock by 25 MHz. Click Apply, wait 5 minutes, 25 MHz, Apply, wait 5 minutes, Apply and so on. Now I'm going directly at the point the CPU will crash, to show you where to start the last step. Now lower down the clock by 50 MHz, click apply, restart OCCT and wait. At this point you should be able to run the test for at least 4 hours, if not, Lower again the frequency until you can run the test for at least 5 hours, then move to the last step, the GPU. For the GPU is similar of what I just did, just follow the flow. In Ryzen Master enable APU GFX speed, set it to 1400 or directly to 1600 if you like the risk. In OCCT, make sure you select the native resolution, in my case 1080p, shader complexity 7, full screen, error check and start. Let it run for 2 minutes. If you're still at zero error, raise the clock by 25 MHz and run the test for 2 minutes and so on. When the test starts giving errors, lower the clock by 25 MHz and now try to run the test for 30 minutes. When you are stable, the best practice is to lower the clock by another 25 megahertz. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you like, like it and don't forget to subscribe.